There are three families of anterior pituitary hormones secreted by different cell populations. The three families are the glycoproteins, the somatomammotropins, and the proopiomelanocortin, or POMC, derivatives. But we won't examine all of these in detail. Instead, we'll look at one particular example. The hypothalamus can release a peptide hormone called thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH, into those portal vessels. The portal vessels take the TRH directly to the anterior pituitary, where it works on a population of cells called thyrotrophs. The thyrotrophs release another hormone in response, and that one's called thyroid-stimulating hormone, or TSH, and this is one of the glycoprotein family of pituitary hormones. The TSH travels in the blood to the thyroid gland, where it stimulates the release of thyroid hormones, which will increase your metabolic rate. Hormone levels need to be carefully controlled, though. If levels get too high, thyroid hormones can act on both the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland to reduce the release of TRH and TSH, respectively, and this is a form of negative feedback. This control structure involving hypothalamus, anterior pituitary, and thyroid gland is referred to as the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. There are other endocrine axes controlled by the hypothalamus via the pituitary in a similar way. For example, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal cortical axis, controlling the adrenal cortex and its production of cortisol, and the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axes, controlling the production of testosterone in men or oestrogen in women. In each case, the hypothalamus produces a releasing hormone which controls the anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary produces a special hormone to control another ductless gland in the body, and that ductless gland produces a third hormone. Negative feedback from the third hormone is used to prevent levels increasing too much and getting out of control. Of course, nothing is ever that simple, though. In the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis in women, the feedback changes from negative feedback to positive feedback during the menstrual cycle, and that's involved in the control of ovulation. It's also worth noting that the anterior pituitary gland also produces growth hormone, which is one of the somatomammotropin family. And growth hormone doesn't fit so neatly within an axis structure. If the normal negative feedback mechanisms somehow go wrong, this can lead to clinical problems. For example, thyroid hormone contains iodine as part of its structure. If you're deficient in iodine because you're not eating enough as part of your diet, you can't make enough thyroid hormone, and this represents one form of hypothyroidism. You might feel tired and cold as your metabolic rate declines. But a knock-on effect will be that the negative feedback suppression exerted by thyroid hormone will be reduced, which means more TRH is produced from the hypothalamus and more TSH is produced from the anterior pituitary. TSH is thyroid-stimulating hormone. But although this stimulates the thyroid gland, it won't increase thyroid hormone production because you're out of iodine. But what it will do is to stimulate the thyroid gland to expand greatly in size, giving you a characteristic swelling in the neck called a goiter. Historically, iodine was low in the county of Derbyshire in central England, and doctors there were used to seeing patients with a goiter, a swelling in their neck. It became known as Derbyshire neck.